Alrighty. Um, yeah, just to add a little bit on that. So, Declaration of Life, June 22nd. It's by no means just for the, uh, um, the mission team, but it's for everyone, each and every one of you. So, you're all welcome to join us. It's going to be an awesome experience. It's simply just worshiping and worshiping and worshiping and then reading scripture, reading scripture, reading scripture. And then, you know, uh, and with the remaining time, we will be simply either handing out um, Bible tracts, scripture tracts. And whatnot. So please get here by at least, you know, um, by 1.20 because we're going to leave here at 1.20 and we're going to start at 2 So because we need to set up and all that. So if possible, do try to get here by 1. Um, also, and uh, for the, so for, to practice that, we're going to be practicing that uh, a little earlier during uh, Friday Oasis. And also, um, during, speaking of Friday Oasis, you know, we have a mission team, we have people that are going to mission, and not everybody is going. But if there's anything that the Lord has designed the church to be, is to partner, is partnership, you know, to go hand in hand. You know, even if you're not going, you could still partner with the mission trip, a mission team to do, to, to, to put, uh, you know, to serve in that mission. So this Saturday, uh, this Friday Oasis, we're going to all get together and we're going to all prepare something called the goodie bag for the people in the mission in Brazil. For those of you who want to help, we do need help. We're going to make about like three, four hundred and plus uh, of them. So we need a lot of hands for that. So please join us in partaking and partnering for mission this Friday at 7.30. Dinner will be given at 7 uh, for those who are coming a little earlier and a little famished. And last but not least, um, also to add on the, the mission team uh, prayer. Uh, it's this Wednesday at 7.30. All mission team members and families uh, will join, but I also want to put it out to, to all, youth, um, all of our youth friends who want to pray for our mission team as well. This is another way in which we could partner with the mission team. Can we, can we make the light, light brighter? I, I feel it's not like fully bright. Yes, thank you. Yes, oh, no wonder it's a bit um, dark and moody. But anyway, so all are welcome. And the youth worship team, because it's been Korean up until uh, last Wednesday, but this Wednesday, because it's the youth, we will be doing almost everything in English. Uh, not completely, but almost everything in English. Um, so please, yeah, all join us and partner up in prayer as well for the mission team. Uh, last but not least, there is a new small group with new teachers. So I'll be sharing that at the end, though, at the end of today. So without much further ado, let's all look to the word of the Lord. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, uh, 10 to 18. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 18. So those of you who have your Bible, please turn to page 316. And those of you who don't, please open up your e-Bible or look up in front of the screen. But I do want to encourage you guys, when you do come to the uh, retreat, bring your Bibles. Okay, bring your Bibles Especially even on Sundays too, I would encourage you guys to bring it on Sunday, but do bring it. It's a must, a must, a must. It's a personal request by the, the speaker as well, as he will be sharing about the Bible. But anyways, it's Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 18. Please follow along as I read it. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of his darkness, world, dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with uh, which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. This is the word of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Alrighty. Do we have any newcomers today? I think I may have missed that. Probably not, huh? No, no, not today. Anyways, so I would like to ask you guys something. If there's one thing that you guys can take into space, what would that be? If you guys have one thing that you guys can take into space, 
what would that be? Now, I remember I was in middle school once, um, just like some of you guys. I was in middle school. I think I was in grade 8. Uh, I was in grade 8, and there was this interesting class that I had to take, which was not so much interesting, but it was just like a compulsory. And so that class was called Home Economics. Anybody know what Home Economics class is? Anybody taking Home Economics? No? Nobody? No? Oh, man, America. <laughs> Georgia, come on. <laughs> Home economics, but it's good. Good going, Georgia. Home economics. It wasn't the most fun, enjoyable class, but it was definitely something that I've learned a lot about life, about taking care of yourself, about uh, house living and all that. And in the first class, um, the teacher asked us a question that I'll never, ever remember, uh, that I'll never, ever forget. Not, not remember, because I still remember it. But I'll, that I'll never forget. And so what the, what the teacher said... It was a Greek teacher. I forgot her name, but it was a Greek teacher. And she was actually our gym teacher. But she specialized also in home economics, supposedly. And so what happened, what the question that she asked was, what are the three most basic things that are required for you to survive? What are the three most basic things that are required for you to survive? Anybody know what the answer is? It's not iPhone. It's not smartphone. It's not tablets. As a matter of fact, it's not, your, it's not even your friends. More so, it doesn't say your church. But that's because that's more of the spiritual side. But realistically, socially, like life-wise, what are the three most basic things, but the most important and crucial things in your life that you need in order for you to survive that applies to all cultures, all nations, and all people of all generations? So the three things, is what is it? What is it? What is it? Water? Uh, yes. Similar. Food. Yes. So water is part of that. Food is one of them, right? Food is one of them. Anybody want to take a guess for the other two? What? Who said that? Jaden? Oh, yeah, Jaden Huang. What did you say? Space. Man, you guys are like almost there, but missing that small 2%. Shelter. Oh, someone said shelter? Oh, yes. Oh, Yakshi, William. Man, you've been like praying, huh? So shelter. So there's food, there's shelter, and what else? What's the last thing that you guys need to survive that's very crucial? What? what? Okay, now you guys are answering. <laughs> what is it? You know, what is it? Sleep? Uh, I mean, you do need that, but that's just like something. But I meant socially. Socially, what is it? Food, shelter, and? Money, uh, it's something money can buy. Teacher Josh, love, yeah, someone get this guy a girlfriend quick. <laughs> what is it, right? What? Clothes, yes, that is right. So the three basic things are food, clothes, and shelter. Food, clothes, and shelter. It means if you have these three things, as long as you figure it out, how to get these three things, food, clothes, and shelter, you could live anywhere in this world and in any society, in any setting, in any environment, you could survive as long as you have these three things. So what are they? First one is food, clothing, and shelter. Not in that specific order, but you need those three things, okay? Now... <clears throat> Now, there was one more thing that was mentioned that is necessary for children and children alone in order for them to mature in a healthy fashion, but also to survive. Anybody want to know what that last answer is? The fourth one is only specifically for children. Someone say water? Yes. Ryan, you're so smart today. I didn't know you should. Is this because of summer school? <laughs> Parents. Children, it's... it's, it's it's not impossible, but most likely um, difficult and near impossible for children to survive in any society without parents, without parents. So, you know, coincidentally, it's, uh, it's um, Father's Day, so do go to your parents and especially your father and say, Father, or no, Father's a bit too, you know, uh, too... Star Wars, like, be like, hey, uh, you know, Dad, I just want to appreciate you. I just want to be able to honor you and respect you and just show some gratitude by recognizing all the things that you've done for me. And then you'll start seeing your dad cry. Like, 
or not. But anyways, so in order for us to survive in any environment, any situation, any community, and any society, these three things, food, clothing, and shelter, not in that specific order, but these three things are the most important things in order for you to survive. Survive. And in the same way, in order for our spirit to survive, you know, our spirit, our soul to survive, there's something that is necessary in our lives. Anybody want to take a guess what that is? Except for Ryan. You're you, you too smart. <laughs> what, is, what does our spirit need in order for it to survive? What is it? What is it, Enoch? I want to just say yes, just to be nice to you, but no. What is it? What is it that we need in order for us to survive? Salvation is already a set thing. It's a decided thing. It's those who believe in Jesus, your salvation is set. But in order for your spirit to survive until that salvation is completed at the end of your life, (coughs) what is it that you need in order for your spirit to survive? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. And that is why today's title is called The Holy Spirit Enables Us. It enables our spirit to do things that is difficult, that is hard, that is gruesome, but that is important in our lives. Why is it that we need the Holy Spirit? Although you can't see it, you're in the middle of a spiritual battle. Everything that's hard, difficult, gruesome, you know, uh, very straining, in your body and spirit. Some things, it's necessary. Some things, you just need to go through with it. And in order for you to survive it, you need what, guys? What is it that you guys need? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Why? Because you're in the middle of a spiritual battle in all of these situations. It's raging all around us, and it's what makes our lives a tumultuous roller coaster. But... In the midst of all that, the Lord gives us what we need to fight, which is through the Holy Spirit, which is what we read in today's passage. It may not feel like it. It may not feel like as if the Holy Spirit is with us all the time, but you're currently in a battle, not a physical battle, but a spiritual battle against Satan and the darkness. Jesus has already won the war through his victory on the cross, but while we wait for his return, And heaven to come down, which is when salvation is completed. It's promised to us, and it's completed when Jesus returns. But until then, what we need is the Holy Spirit, which implies that we need Jesus as well. We need the gospel. We need all that. Um, Yes. And that is why, as we read today, what does the Holy Spirit provide us with? The the spiritual armor, God's spiritual armor, the armor of God. God doesn't leave us. It means it just shows us that God doesn't leave us to fight this battle without providing anything to fight this battle on our own. He's always there with us, fighting alongside us, fighting with us, fighting for us. So whatever you go through in life, whatever you go through in your relationship with your family, your friends, your school, your work, your church, with your pastor... Hopefully there's no problem. It's always, there's always going to be a spiritual battle where Satan is going to try to attack you, to tempt you, so that you go, you turn away from God. But God doesn't let you fight these battles alone. He fights with you and for you, alongside you. He doesn't leave us defenseless. So in Ephesians, in today's book, Um, Paul encouraged us to put on the same spiritual armor that Jesus used when fighting his own battle while living in this world 2,000 years ago. In other words, uh, Paul is encouraging us to take up Jesus' characters and his habits to stand against Satan, not just to be a good person. Anybody could be a good person. Anybody could be a nice person. As a matter of fact, I see so many good people here, but at the same time, I would like you guys to ask yourselves, Despite being a good person or a nice person, if you, I mean, unless you think you're not, do I still believe in Jesus? Am I still a follower of Christ? And that is what dictates whether that promise of salvation is going to be fulfilled in you or not. But until then, 
Now, until then, when you decide to dedicate your life to follow Jesus, to, to, to be a disciple of Christ, you will always struggle. You will always struggle. Why? Because Satan is always attacking you through this spiritual uh, um, battle. But Jesus, if you look at Jesus, he shows us, he teaches us what we can do, which is always through his character and his habits. The reason why um, we have to look at Jesus' character and his habits so that we may be able to stand against Satan is because we will always struggle with relying on our own strength, our own character, and our own habits. Why? Because we're all sinners. And then you can start asking the question, I didn't do anything bad. I tried to live like a good person. Yes, while that may be true, but on the same time, our tendency to sin will always remain, which in short, although you may have been nice to someone else, although you may have been nice to your peers, your family and friends, and I don't know, anybody around you, were you nice to God? And the difference between being nice to God and between being nice to people is whether you sin or not. Because sinning is turning away from God. And so if we rely on ourselves, we will be relying on our sinful self. So when you face difficult situations, circumstances, you will face difficult temptations. But in today's passage, we're instructed to, to, to do two things. Apart from taking up, uh, you know, just going through the armor of God, there's two clear things that the Lord is telling us, that Paul is teaching us through the book of Ephesians, which is first to take up, take up, take up the armor of God. And the second is to stand, to stand upright. So take up means to take up the armor of God that protects you against darkness and temptation so that it won't take place into your, uh, into your body and in your life. And stand firm means to stand firm somewhere, some side, a position, which means to stand firm in Christ. When you just stand up, you, automatically you're, 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 you're standing up for yourself. But that could also mean that you're not standing with God. You need to learn to stand with God. In order for you to fight this spiritual battle against Satan, in order for you to be able to overcome all the temptations that's suppressing you, both physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, in order for you to overcome that, you need to stand firm in Christ and take up the armor of God. It means you have to be disciplined to know Jesus and become more like Him so that you can stand firm to defend yourself. How though? How? With God's word. Sometimes we tend to forget that there is a spiritual battle going on. In our daily lives, there's so many temptations, so many addictions, so many things that's like popping up in front of our face. Especially with today's social media. It makes us automatically forget about God and just dive in at the moment. Why? Because they have that dopamine effect, that addictive effect when you're looking through social media. I'm not saying that you shouldn't look at it. What I'm saying is, sometimes it will, there are moments when it will take you away from God. And that is when you have to ask yourself and ask God, God, is this the right moment to do this? Is Satan tempting me to keep holding on to this rather than me holding on to you? And what happens when things don't go the way we want? What happens when things don't go the way that, you know, we're always like, you know, we're not satisfied with, we're always, you know, angry about? What happens? What's the end result of that? I'll give you guys a very clear example that I'm sure many of you guys will probably relate, as, especially as you go through puberty. Something that I went through myself. We end up blaming people for our mistakes, for our faults, for the things that's happening to us when it wasn't even their intention or their, their fault at all. We end up blaming people. It's always going to be someone's fault. We always try to find a way to, to blame someone. But it, the people aren't our enemy. The people aren't the enemy. Okay, so if you look at verse 12 in today's passage, can you have verse 12 pop up, please? Just to show clearly what the scripture is telling us. It says this, so why don't we all read it together, okay? Read it all together in one voice. For our struggle is not, okay, no, 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 no. Restart, restart, reset, rewind. Together, clearly say this so that you may know and understand what Paul is telling us and what God is telling us about this. Let's all read it together. It says, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Okay, it starts with this. 
For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. It means it's not against the physical people. Okay, whatever we go through, it's always Satan. It's always the enemy. It's always darkness. The, the, the authorities and the powers of this dark world against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. So I want you guys to ask yourselves, have there ever been a moment where you started blaming other people for what's happening to you? That's already you losing your spiritual battle. Now, of course, there may be moments when it's actually someone's fault, okay? There are moments like that. I remember, you know, when uh, one day I pissed off my sister, and then I, I was like, a, I, I was like a, a grade, uh, I think I was like in grade seven or something. I pissed off my sister, and she ripped up a book that I really loved. It was my uh, Pokedex book. And she like just ripped it up in half. <laughs> it was a thing that I really liked it. And what did I do in retaliation? I just went to her room and just trashed it. <laughs> like, literally, I just... All on her table. Why? Because I started blaming. And now, those, these things can happen. You can, there, there, are, there can be reasons that it's, some, it's definitely someone's fault. But even in that, how we respond to that can change through the Holy Spirit. Do you want to fist fight? Do you want to take revenge and let the cycle of anger always continue? Or do we want to be Christ-like to one another? And we can be. Why? Because the battle that we're fighting is always a spiritual battle. A spiritual battle. Right, Andrew? And at times, it can feel as if we're losing, especially when it comes to, you know, experiencing many things in our lives. Uh, in our fight against sin. And you may have a sin where you continue to struggle with, with like lust or jealousy or anger. But you can win the battle if you clothe yourself with the armor of God, which is what? The word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. In today's culture, people are no longer able to distinguish between what's truthful and what is lies. But as a church, as Christians, we have to stand up for what is truth, which is truth that comes from God and God alone, not from anywhere else. Some ideas from the world challenge core biblical truth. For instance, teaching on gender identity, marriage, healthy relationships, money, fame. Now, while all that is important, it must always be based on the truth. What's, what's, very, um, what's very sad is that the world can give really convincing reasons why God's word doesn't apply to these topics anymore. Since it's considered an ancient text to a different cult, from a different culture. But God's words never change. God's character never changes. And while it can be difficult to make or make us uncomfortable, believers in Jesus must always stand by God's word. And if you aren't careful, we end up focusing all of our attention on what we shouldn't do and neglect to recognize what we should do. And as a result, what happens to us? The cycle continues again. Bad things happen and we start blaming other people again. And then we're going to feel bad again and again and again. Which can lead us to a sinful life and a life that can't flee from sin. And truthfully said, we can't run from sin as well. We can't run from sin. It is in our very nature ever since Adam and Eve brought the first sin into this world. The original sin into this world. And that is all due to Satan's lies, if you look at it closely. It is, brought, it is through lies that we, have been, that we are being led to sin. But sometimes lies tend to sound like truthful. Lies tend to sound like it's coming, oh, this is what God said, actually. This is actually from the Bible. But it's just twisted in some minor area that's crucial to the truth. Because if you look at Satan and how he, in the Garden of Eden, when he cunningly twisted God's command and convinced Adam and Eve to believe in a half-truth, not a complete truth, but a half-truth, which is, at the end of the day, a lie. And that is how the original sin started. And it's the same with us. Our battle is much like theirs. It may seem convincing. It may seem appealing. These terms and quotes may seem, oh, this is the way that I want to live my life because it's just so good. Because Satan won't come at us with an elaborate lie. He won't like just, how do you say, like, tenoku, hold your head, you know? He's not going to be like, oh, I'm Satan, you know, I just make lies. You want to believe in my lie? He doesn't say it like that. He's a wolf in sheep's clothing. He takes a piece of, piece of biblical truth or idea 
and twist it, making it sound as if God is saying it. But we have to fight him. And the way to fight him is by knowing the truth. How do we know the truth? By allowing the Spirit to enable us to know the truth. We can't flee from sin. And so we must run toward God with his word, to his word. We must replace what makes us empty with what, what makes us full, which is his word, which is God. And ask him to change our life, our character, our habits, so that we may draw closer and closer and closer to Christ. And when we expose Satan's lies by standing in God's words of truth, we're able to overcome all things. Why? Because Satan allows... Uh, because the Holy Spirit, sorry, excuse me, because the Holy Spirit allows us. He, uh, he, he enables us. And I'll end it with this example. When Jesus was tempted by Satan after fasting for 40 days in the wilderness, what do you think were his temptations? Food, you know, food. Why? It's something that we, are, we can be greedy about. Okay? And what did Jesus do? He stood firm and repelled Satan through his word. There is also his identity as the Son of God, okay? Pride, okay? Apart from greed, there's pride. So as the identity of Jesus as the Son of God, he was utilizing pride and Jesus' identity so that he may sin, commit a sin of pride. But he repelled it and rejected with the word of the Lord. And lastly, he repelled arrogance. Jesus repelled arrogance with the word of the Lord when Jesus, uh, Satan was telling him, hey, if you throw yourself off a cliff, I'm sure God will do this for you. Why don't you test God? And he repelled it with the word of the Lord. Jesus relied on the truth of God's word. And he prayed, and during his time in the wilderness, he prayed, he spent time with the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit enabled him to overcome Satan. So I would like to end it with this. I would like to end it with this. Just like how there are three crucial but very basic things in order for us to survive in any situation, in any circumstance, in any environment, there's always that one thing that is very crucial, that that allows us, that enables us to survive spiritually. And that is the Holy Spirit and the Word of the Lord. It is God. And so I want to encourage you all. You are not defenseless. You are not alone. As a matter of fact, though you have fallen, you haven't fallen short because God makes it all up for you through Jesus. He is with you. He's providing everything that he can for you. He is walking alongside you and he is fighting for you. Believe in him, trust in him, and hold on to him as you allow the Holy Spirit to enable you to overcome all and every temptations. For that is the Lord in whom we worship in whom we praise. So let's take this moment and pray before the Lord. Let us pray. Let's, uh, let's all stand before the Lord. I want to invite you all to just stand uh, before the Lord as we go out in prayer. Let us pray. Father, we want to lift this moment up to you, God. I thank you for always being there for us, for reminding us through the scripture of who you really are, God the all-powerful God, the almighty God, the creator of heaven and the earth, the one who trumps all things, Lord, the one who saves, the one who loves, the one who is merciful. And all these characters, and it's because of all these characters that we're still here today, that we're still able to come before you, stand before you in worship and in prayer and in scripture, Lord. And so I ask, God and Father, that you come speak to us, Lord. Touch our hearts, Lord and Father so that we may be able to overcome all the temptations, all the struggles, and all the evil forces that is bringing us down, Lord. We praise you and we honor you, Lord. We thank you and pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm coming back to the heart of worship.
you when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm so real, Lord, for the thing I made it when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'll bring you more than a song. I bring you more than a song. It's all about you. I bring you more than a song. I bring you more than a song. It's all about you. I bring you more than a song. I'll bring you more than a song. It's all about you. I'm coming back to the heart of worship when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, God. We stand before you, and I ask, Father, that you would be with us in this moment, Lord, as you want to first repent of our sins, Lord. Help us, God, and Father, lead a life, God, and Father, of repentance so that when we stand before you, God, that we will be cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ, Lord, that we will be made anew, God, and Father, pure, Lord, righteous. I ask, God, and Father, that you just touch each and every one of our youth's hearts, Lord, all of our stance as well, God. Touch our hearts, God, and Father, so that when we go out to you, Jesus, Lord, We may be able to overcome all things, Lord, all trials and temptations, Lord. And when we do overcome them, Lord, that we be able to glorify you, Lord Jesus. For that is a life that in which we want to live, Lord. That is a life, God and Father, in which we want to be able to show our dedication and our surrender to you, Lord. So we thank you, Lord, and we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us end the service with a benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God our Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of us forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord.